لم تكن له فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان منتصرا هنالك الولاية لله الحق No one will care for you like your parents will care for you. At Annur Education Center, we give orphans a loving home, clothing, food, and education. Be the orphan's parent by sponsoring an orphan for 18,000 Rand or 1,500 Rand per month. Annur Education Center, a place where orphans call home. Imagine, imagine a world where each person has access to their basic rights. A world where everyone is equal. Imagine a world where each person will have an equal share in each single seed of wheat. Where each child has the freedom to learn. This Ramadan, we ask you to feed the fasting in 14 countries around the world with AMA. Provide an iftar box for 100 rand, a hamper for 1,500 rand, or feed a village for 15,000 rand. Donate today at Africa Muslims Agency and imagine the difference you can make. فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مواقعوها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا زوا ومن أظلم ممن ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه ومن أظلم ممن ذكروا بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوا وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم 
موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا فلما ما بلغ مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه آتنا غدا أنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة فإن نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتد على آثارهما قصصا فوجدا عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى أحدث لك منه ذكرا فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها لتغرق أهلها لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أقل إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال لا تؤاخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقيا غلاما فقتله قال أقتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا صدق الله العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا ومولانا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي بحق حبيبنا وسيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول الله تعالى في القران المجيد مخبرا وامرا قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم 
my dearly beloved Jamaatul Muslimin, honorable elders, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, and all our beautiful youth, as well as the dynamic team of the Voice of the Cape who is broadcasting live here, Muhammad Fasir Peterson and his team, as well as our viewers on Facebook and YouTube, I greet you all with the warm greetings of peace, love and mercy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Almighty Allah, first and foremost, I would like to thank our young Qari, Hafiz Mayer Didriks, for that various, very melodious recitation of the glorious Quran. May Almighty Allah accept and may Allah bless us all through the barakah of the Quran. And so we commence in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. All praise be to Almighty Allah, the Creator, the Nourisher and the Sustainer of the Universe. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. As a Muslim, I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. Allah is the only true sovereign of the skies and the earth. And Allah has no partner whatsoever. Wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu. And as a Muslim, I bear witness that I believe in all the prophets of Almighty Allah from the time of Nabi Adam alayhi salam to the last prophet Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ibn Abdullah, the son of Abdullah radiallahu an and may Allah have blessings, put blessings and salam on his parents, his family, his sahaba, and all believers till the end of time. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Now, Jamaatul Muslimin, I don't think anyone will disagree with me when I make the clear statement here today by saying that the world is in total turmoil. It looks like the world and all the nations on earth has gone mad. It looks like humanity has gone crazy. We can't think straight anymore. There's no respect for life anymore. There's hardly any respect for whatever is held sacred by people of various religions. Because since time immemorial, there was a virus existing which was worse than the global COVID-19 virus. A virus that gripped the hearts of many human beings and a virus which caused the utter ruin and destruction. And this virus is termed in the glorious Quran and Allah speaks of this virus, this cancer, which is called At-Takathur in Surah 102. At-Takathur, which means the negative quality of greed and hoarding. Greed for more wealth. Greed for more fame. Greed for more position and status and striving for more and more dominion and control throughout the world. It has always existed throughout human history. And we know those of us who even has a glimpse of understanding of human history, you know what this evil quality of greed has done to those before us what it is doing at present to those who allow it to take grip and entrenchment in their hearts and it will destroy those of the future who will not take heed and lessons from the history of humanity. And if we look at history and we look at Hitler, we look at Fir'aun, we look at Nimrud, you look at Alexander the Great, my great uncle, 
You look at all these tyrants of the world. Where are they today? Six feet down. Six feet down where they belong. They challenge Allah. They think they are mighty and powerful. And Allah just sent this angel of death who touch them with his icy hands. And in no time, they are six feet under the earth. And this is where we all are heading to. Let me make a minor comparison that even the children sitting here can understand. If the human body gets affected with a cancer, and you don't tend to that cancer, you don't go for treatment and check it out, that cancer will consume your entire body. And so it was approximately 19, between 1946, 1948, when a great cancer, because of greed, the result of greed, a great cancer gripped the land of Palestine. And this cancer was in the form of the political entity called Zionism. It affected the people and the land of Palestine. And because it went unchecked by the rest of the world, that cancer of Zionism is still growing and not only threatening the entire land of Palestine, but threatening to consume the entire planet Earth. And before I proceed with my lecture here today, I want to make it very clear because I know there's people listening. I know they always listen into Masjid Al-Quds to hear what is being said here. I want to tell people in no uncertain terms that when we speak and we say we are anti-Zionist, we are not anti-Jew. No Muslim can be anti-Jew or anti-Christian, or anti-Hindu, or anti-any human race, because that tantamounts to racism. So when you're anti-Zionism, we, we condemn the political entity of Zionism, which equates to racism and apartheid, and they are planning the greater plan is to consume the greater part and the entire Palestine land and destroy and exterminate and expel every Palestinian from the land of birth. And so we need to understand that this cancer of greed breeds a, a, a evil yearning for dominion and total control over humanity and over the land of Palestine. This evil virus and cancer of greed, it breeds hatred. Hatred in the fact that they completely deny the existence of the Palestinians in the land of birth. Having since the Nakba started in 1948, expelled more than 7 million Palestinians who rightfully belong to Palestine, who live now with refugee status. They live like aliens. They live with no rights in countries like Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and all over the world. And yet, they must maintain their refugee status, and we need to support them because as long as they are refugee status they have the right to return to Palestine because the Israelis want to offer them go get citizenship in America in Europe in Britain and all over the world because once they have accepted citizenship then according to the laws of the illegitimate state of Israel they will not have the right of return to Palestine and they also keep the Palestinians at bay, refusing them the right of return to Palestine because if that entire 7 million Palestinians must 
return to Palestine, then the Palestinians will be in the majority. Can you imagine this mad state that they find themselves in when Palestine was there as a country? Europe was persecuting the Jews. Every many countries were persecuting the Jews. And the Jews came to Palestine asking the Palestinians for citizenship, asking them to become Palestinians, which the Palestinians granted them, saying, Ahlan wa Sahlan, you are our cousins, come. Today, they turn it around and call the Palestinians Israeli Arabs. Allah, this is laughable. It's laughable, but the world is turning a blind eye to this madness. This greed, virus of greed, this cancer breeds so much hatred and so much impunity. We have seen, the world has seen recently when the Al Jazeera journalist Shereen Abu Akleh was assassinated by some Jewish soldiers. They did not only kill her, but even the day of a funeral, she was a Palestinian Christian. Because Palestinians are not all Muslims. You have Christian Palestinians as well. And as the Israelis, the Zionists, are desecrating Masjid al-Aqsa and the Dome of the Rock, they are also desecrating the Holy Church of the Sepulchre and the Holy Church of the, the Nativity where the Christian community believe that Jesus Christ, whom we call Nabi Isa alayhi salam, was crucified there. There in that one church, you also find the body, the, the, the burial site, the tomb of Sayyidatina Maryam alayhi salam, which Allah refers to in the glorious Quran. These places are being totally desecrated today. Showing no respect even to the woman's funeral, beating and charging the mourners who were carrying her cattle and her beer to a beer to the graveyard. This is the impunity that they act with. Knowing full well that all cameras are on them, they are showing to the whole world, even if you all are watching, we don't care. We will be rude, we will be vulgar, we will be obscene, and the world can do us nothing. This tiny nation of Israel, illegitimate state of Israel, and the Muslims are fast asleep. The Muslims are not only fast asleep, the Muslim world, if you look around, even locally here, you find we have so much strength and bravado and bravery in us to fight one another. Calling each other kafir, calling each other munafik, fighting Muslims against Muslims. The one mufti pass a verdict of kufr against another mufti. The one organization attack other organizations. And so the Muslims are carrying on. But when it comes to facing the real enemy, the enemy is out to destroy Islam and Muslims throughout the world. Where is that bravado? Where is that bravery? Where is that strength that we show to each other when it comes to the real enemy? We are pop. Looks like we've got no strength. This is a sad, sad state that the Muslim world find itself in. This cancer and virus of greed has gripped the Hindu government in India to such an extent that Muslim shops are being burned, Muslim properties are being destroyed, Muslim lives are being lost because the plan is to cleanse India from all Muslims and all signs of Islam. It is happening today while we are sitting here right in front of the eyes of the world and who is even sending out a murmur of complaint. This virus of greed, this cancer of greed has gripped the hearts of many Arab Muslim countries who are now have normalization ties with India and with Israel. These are the countries who murder the Muslims 
But these Arabs find it in their heart to normalize ties with them, embracing them. I saw a clip where one Hindu guru came to an Arab country and where these Arab leaders actually tell him, we love you. We love you. Falling in love. But they don't express the same love for their own Muslim brothers and sisters in various parts of the world. Where is their love for their own Muslim brethren in Yemen who are being bombed to smithereens? Where are the Muslim love they must have in their hearts for the poor and impoverished people throughout Africa who is dying of malnutrition, who is dying of hunger? Do you know while we are sitting right here in this holy hour of Juma, in this most beautiful house of Almighty God Allah, these little children in Lebanon, little children in Libya, little children throughout the world in starving parts of the world who eat grass at this moment. Grass. Because they don't even have access to clean water to drink. Not a murmur from the hypocr hypocrisy, from the hypo hypocritical nations of the world who, s who claim to be champions of justice and champions for the oppressed people. Muslims, as long as we do not wake up, no one is there to help us. Our own country, South Africa, is not free from this virus of cancer and greed, this cancer of greed. Look at our own government, and we need to speak out, because this is our country as much. We are not visitors here. We are born here, we are the soil. I'm proud to say I'm an African. I'm an African, because we are born here on the soil of Africa, irrespective of whether our forefathers came here more than 300 years ago from Malaysia, Indonesia, Java, India. But we are Africans. We have been born here. This is our land. This is our country as much. And we need to speak out. We are sitting with a government that is corrupt to the core. A government that is stealing the country bankrupt. A government who seemed fit to meet with the Zionists who are here in Cape Town and allowing the Zionists to celebrate the existence of Israel. How can we allow the Zionists to celebrate racism and apartheid when we came from a history of apartheid? We know what it is to face apartheid. We know what it is to be baton charged and thrown into the prisons of apartheid by a brutal police, hit our senses out, the daylights out of us. By agreeing and standing and supporting Zionist Israel today, you are betraying the honor and the sacrifices of the late Nelson Mandela. You are dishonoring the memory of Imam Abdullah Harun Rahmatullah Alayhi, Steve Biko, and so many heroes who have given their lives for the struggle for liberation in our beloved country of South Africa. So this evil must be checked. We need to seriously look how we can support good causes that can liberate the world from the darkness of oppression, the darkness of apartheid, and the darkness of injustice. For if this virus is not checked, wallahi, it will consume the entire world. Don't let one day our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren curse us and say, what cowards were my forefathers who could not stand up. That is why we are suffering today. Our forefathers, we can look back with pride, not with arrogance, but with dignity and pride. 
we look back in our history and we can be proud of our forefathers. We can be proud of Sheikh Yusuf al Makassari, Rahmatullah alayhi lies buried in Fori. We can be proud of Sheikh Abdurrahman Matura, the Tuang that's blaze buried on Robben Island. We can be proud of our great parents on the hills of camps by Sheikh Nurul Mubin, our Karamats who are buried in Constantia and right around the Western Cape, our Karamats who lay buried on the very premise of Habibia Masjid, in Durban, Hazrat Sufi Saab and Hazrat Bashapir. These were our great forefathers who came, brought Islam, kept Islam alive, stood firm. Today, we are sitting in one of the most beautiful masajid as Muslims with the Kalima Shahada in our hearts. What are you and I and all of us, what are we leaving behind for our generations to come? And so let me remind you in conclusion, Jamaat, everything is not doom and gloom. We need to address these situations. We need to speak about the situations. And Islam encourages us to be relevant, to address current issues. We must not be like an ostrich with your head in the sand. You must know what is happening around you. Do you know who is a true jahil? A jahil is that person who is not aware of his surroundings and his atmosphere and the news that is happening around them. That is a true ignoramus. And so we say, O oh, Muslims, wake up, because Allah tells us in the glorious Quran, La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Irrespective of the darkest situation that you find yourself in, the darkest situation, they might be looking as if there's no light at the end of the tunnel for you. Always bear in mind, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. That is Allah's promise to us in the glorious Quran. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Even if the whole world want to gang up against us, which they are doing right now, there is a massive movement out to destroy Islam, out to demonize Islam further. They are already working how to take my and your children and our grandchildren away from the deen of Islam. Wake up, Allah warns us. Yuriduna liyutfi'u nur Allahi bi afwahim. Wallahu mutimmu nurihi. Walau karihal mushrikun. Walau karihal kafirun. Allah says throughout the ages of human history, you are going to find a group of people. They won't make themselves known. But they will have one goal in mind, and that is to extinguish the nur of Allah. Their main purpose is to destroy the deen of Allah. But Allah say, Wallahu mutimmu nuri. Allah say, Verily know for sure that Allah will make sure that Islam will reach its height. Walau karihal mushrikun, whether those who are making shirk, the mushriks, whether they like it or dislike it, those kufar, whether they like it or dislike it, Allah will keep his deen to perfection and Allah will make his deen to march and bulldoze every other ideology which is godlessness. Islam is going to survive. Islam is going to thrive. Islam is going to be victorious. Where do we stand? Are we part of Allah's plan? Or are we standing one side? Like Nabi Musa's people said to Nabi Musa, No, 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 we can't fight. You and Allah, you go and fight. You and Allah go fight the believers while we stay here. Are we going to be like that? Sitting one side, sitting on the fence? Or get involved somehow at least? Somehow make our contribution somehow for the liberation of all the oppressed people throughout the world. And therefore, it's necessary for Muslims who are concerned to stand with the truth-loving Christians. Stand with the truth and justice-loving Jews. Stand with the truth and justice-loving Hindus. 
and people of various religions because there's good people in other religions also. There's good Christians, there's good Jews, there's good Hindus who's not satisfied and happy what is happening in India. Jews who speak out about what is happening and they speak out strongly against the Israeli government than many of us Muslim organizations. So we need to find ways how we can unite how we can form a common ground with these people who are truth and, and justice loving people and fight injustice and oppression throughout the world. And I want to make a small comparison in, a, in conclusion. The same comparison I used in one of my talks during the month of Ramadan when I spoke on Surah al Naml. Surah al Naml means the Surah of the end. The tiny end, the Ruimir, what looked up Yehron, tiny end, tiny insect. Allah makes reference to this end in the glorious Quran, and even a surah is named after the end. And here Allah reminds us of Nabi Sulaiman alayhi salam, who was one day marching with his mighty army of men and jinn and his horses. And one tiny end, he saw from a distance the army of Nabi Sulaiman came on. And he knew that when they come here where the ends are, they are gonna, the hooves of the horses are going to trample all the ends to death. So this tiny end saw this army coming on and he called out to its fellow end saying, Ya ayyuhan namal, udakhulu masakinakum. He said, oh my fellow ends, enter into your holes, into your little homes. The army of Suleiman is coming. They are going to trample us to death. Nabi Suleiman from a distance, he was still basically a mile away. He heard the voice of that tiny end. Allah say, Fatabassa madahika. And Suleiman smiled and he giggled and he stopped his army. Only when he was sure that all the ends were inside their little homes, he proceeded with his army. That one tiny end saved the lives of all the other ends because of its worry, its concern for the safety and the welfare and the well-being of its fellow ends. Why am I making comparison of this? If you look at Israel and you look at all America and its allies supporting Israel, then Palestine and its supporters look like an end. We are like an end in comparison to them. But as Allah's help and mercy came upon the ends, and Allah made Nabi Sulaiman salam heard the crying out of the end, if Nabi Sulaiman from a mile away could hear the cry of an end, do you think that Allah doesn't hear our du'as? Do you think that Allah don't hear the cries of the Palestinian people, the cries of the Muslims who are being massacred in India, the cries of the oppressed people throughout the world who is crying out for help, assistance, and justice. Allah, yeah. And as Allah saved the tiny ends, as much as we are an end in comparison to America and its allies who continuously support Israel, Allah's help will be with us. So don't despair. Don't despair. Keep up with your du'as. Keep up with your kunut, which we will do in the salah today as well. The kunut for Allah's help to come down upon the Muslims. Keep up with your Monday and Thursday fasting. Alhamdulillah, we the, the, the Al-Quds Foundation here of South Africa, for some time now we have started this process of fasting on a Thursday. Hatta tahriri masjid al-Aqsa. Until the liberation of Al-Aqsa and the land of Palestine. And every Thursday we move to a different masjid. Last night we were in Sariya State Masjid. This coming Thursday, inshallah, we will be at Haidafel Masjid. And we ask the communities 
to come out and support, listen to the latest news what is happening. There you can get inspiration. There even if you can't fast or you don't fast, you join in iftar for those who are fasting. We make a special dua. We give nasiha. We have a little dhikr. I'm asking the community, don't divorce Masjid Al-Aqsa and the land of Palestine from your lives. Allah, Allah hears us. Allah sees us. Don't underestimate your dua. Dua is your connection with your creator. As I always say, dua does not mean to sing a few lines in Arabic. Dua means conversation with my Lord, with my creator, with my Allah. You converse with Allah in Afrikaans, in English, in the language of your heart. That is dua. Where you Cleanse your heart. You talk your heart out to Allah. That is real dua. So no one can say they can't make dua. Speak to Allah in your language. And I pray to Allah in conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Allah make us true mu'mineen. Allah grant victory to the oppressed people in Palestine, in Kashmir, in India, in every part of the world. Allah grants victory to the Mujahideen and Allah grant the flag of Islam to rise high throughout the world. But most importantly of all, Allah grants us to be part of that plan and to get involved in somehow, even if you can't contribute financially, even if you can't go there and be part of the great, great jihad, nothing stops you from being on your musalla and make dua to Allah for the oppressed people throughout the world. May Almighty Allah bless us all. Amin Ya Rabbil Alameen. Just a few, very few announcements. So I want to encourage you that this Thursday coming, inshallah, we will be at Haidafel Masjid for Maghrib. Come and join us for iftar, for dua, and awareness of the plight of the Palestinian people, inshallah. Also tomorrow, I will start a three-week Hajj class for those who will be leaving for Hajj and those who intend to go next year who want to come for the Baraka, you are welcome, it will be in the Masjid. We will also try to broadcast it live on YouTube and Facebook, inshallah. Our Hajj class will start tomorrow, for tomorrow, next Saturday, and the following Saturday. Just for three Saturdays, I will cover the, the Arkan of Hajj and the basic five days of Hajj to prepare our Hujjaj in the most simplest way how to go and perform the Hajj. So we'll explain it so that even if a person comes in the deen and a person needs to go for Hajj, they will know what to do because you can perform Umrah and Hajj without a single word of Arabic, just with your heart. Because Hajj and Umrah is the journey of the heart. So everyone is welcome, men and women, uh, tomorrow, from tomorrow afternoon, after Dhuwar, half past one to half past three for two hours, we will start our Hajj class, inshallah. We also have been asked to make dua for Shu'aib Martin, the son of one of our, ke uh, one of our car guards outside, Shafiq. Uh, is his son Shu'aib's 40 days today. He passed away in the holy month of Ramadan. May Almighty Allah grant him and all our deceased Jannatul Firdaus. Amin. And lastly, we have been asked to make dua for Zainu Palika from Mavis Road, who is seriously ill. We ask Almighty Allah to grant him and all our sick people at home and in hospital. Allah grant them Shifa and Kamila. Amin. Ya Rabbal Alameen. And lastly, once again, I would like to thank the voice of the Cape for being present here today and broadcasting our message throughout. May Almighty Allah accept. Amin. And Juma Mubarak to all. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول حي على الصلاة
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا على الصلاة حيا على الصلاة حيا على الفلاح حيا على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض في ستة أيام ثم استوى على العرش أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله الصادق الوعد الأمين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه صلاة وسلاما دائمين متلازمين إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فيا أمة التوحيد اتقوا الله ولتنذر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسألن يومئذ عن النعيم وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر صدق الله مولانا العظيم الحديث قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم أو يرحمكم من في السماء أو كما قال صدقت يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله لنا ولكم بالقرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله أستغفر الله أستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فتوبوا إلى الله إنه كان غفارا اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوانم ودفد وبارك زلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر والصلاة والسلام على سيد البشر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقال تعالى مخبرا وآمرا قولا كريما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidum Majid Warda Allahumma an khulafa'ir rashidin Amir al-Mu'minina Sayyidina Abi Bakrin al-Siddiq Wa Amir al-Mu'minina Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab Wa Amir al-Mu'minina Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan Wa Amir al-Mu'minina Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum Wa an baqiyyati al-Sahabati wal-Qarrabati wa tabi'in Wa tabi'i tabi'in Wa tabi'ihim bi ihsanin ila yawm al-Din اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واحفظنا يا الله يا الله من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم اغفر لنا ولوالدينا ولأستاذنا ولجميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم أعيد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين إلى أخوي المسجد الحرام ومسجد النبوي المدني الشريف آمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم استوي استقيم رحمك الله Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ما كان على النبي من حرج فيما فرض الله له سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قدرا مقدورا 
الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر سمع الله لمن حمده اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وكنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك إنه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من عديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت فلك الحمد على ما قضيت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك نستغفرك ونتوب إليك اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم احفظ مسجد الأقصى اللهم عد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد النبي الأم وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم التواب الرحيم الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم نتوب إليك ونسألك توبة ومغفرة إنه هو التواب الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير ربنا لا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا واغفر لنا فإنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ودخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا راد لما قضيت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد اللهم إنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمؤمنين المسلمات ارفع لهم الدرجات وكفر عنهم السيئات يا مولانا يا رب العالمين اللهم اشفي من ضانا اللهم اشفي من ضانا اللهم اشفي من ضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين قال الله تعالى ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين No one will care for you like your parents will care for you at Annur Education Center, we give orphans a loving home, clothing, food, and education. Be the orphan's parent by sponsoring an orphan for 18,000 Rand or 1,500 Rand per month. Annur. or feed a village for 15,000 Rand. Donate today at Africa Muslims Agency and imagine the difference you can make.